sits at the bottom of this valley, but it's built all the way up these mountains running up to about 9,000 feet. Mexico City covers more land than 30 of the world's nations, like 50 miles by 60 miles, volcanoes, and goes from a low of about 7,000 feet to 12,000 feet. So all these cities have altitudes that overlap each other. But all that is secondary. They want the highest capital. The highest capital wasn't one of the choices offered. It's a bad question. There's a map book of LA called the Thomas Guide that has like 120 pages. I've kept track of how many different pages of the Thomas Guide I've been naked in. And it's something like 40. It's like I'm running my own game show, Naked Bingo, trying to get, you know, like seven consecutive squares where I've been naked. If I'm looking to complete a naked square, you know, I'll look in that square and see if there are any colleges, and then I'll go hit the art department and see if they can use a model. Is this competitive? Depends. Art Center Pasadena doesn't hire me anymore because they've caught me being an idiot too many times. Which means... All right. Sometimes they ask you to work in costume. They asked me to be a construction worker, which was fine. I, could, I have a bunch of tools. I brought in some tools. There's this old easel stand that's just all rotten. And I'm actually working on it, trying to knock it back together. The wood is all termite-eaten and the saw slips. I saw my thumb in half. So blood's going all over the place, and i got to get off the stand and get wrapped up. Though I was accurate, because if you look at the hands of people who actually work at, as carpenters, they've all got nine and a half fingers. A little bit too authentic. If you're in a tough pose where all your muscles are clenched, pain and immobility would help me focus on thinking about the structure of the universe. Relationships between physical constants, what I call lazy voodoo physics, deciding that that's an interesting constant between the proton and the electron. Maybe the universe is that ratio times the apparent age of the universe old. So how old? Let's put an age on the universe. All right, let me take a wild guess. Let's pretend this is a very valuable question on millionaire. At least the proton-electron mass ratio times the apparent age of the universe, 30 trillion years old. It's got to be at least that old. The time it takes a person to form a thought is about 1 30th of a second two and a half million thoughts a day. All right, two and a half million times. So you're looking at 750 billion thoughts over a lifetime. Then you're looking at 15 billion times, 750 billion times, maybe 10 to the 65th. The universe is pretty old. If it's anything like what I think it is. I looked at 25,000 questions from 14 countries in seven languages, every continent except for Africa and Antarctica. Out of those 25,000 questions, I found over a thousand magnitude questions. Every correct magnitude question is phrased according to the proper rules of what is the and which of these. There are three incorrect magnitude questions that I've found. The two besides mine would be wrong regardless of how they were phrased. They asked in one of their board games what U.S. state has the longest coastline. Their answer is Michigan. World Almanac, Time Almanac, Rand McNally Atlas, 16 out of 17 different dictionaries 
coastline refers to land adjacent to a sea or ocean. It's got zero coastline. It's wrong. Now, wait a second. This is the board game? This is the chocolate board game. If you get the questions right, you're supposed to be rewarded with pieces of chocolate. So on the chocolate board game, they have the Michigan question. Yes. So the only magnitude question that made it to broadcast, improperly phrased, was mine. I was certainly a better daddy before my stupid millionaire thing. We'd build puzzles together and I was less distracted. What kind of puzzles? The foam core 3D puzzles. Notre Dame we built, Mont Saint-Michel, and we were working on Big Ben when the whole millionaire thing happened. And, you know, I started spending my nearly 600 hours researching the topography of all these cities. Big Ben never got close to being finished. Maybe a couple little ornaments that go along the top edge before you get to the clock. Almost none of it's finished. So my wife finally put it back in the box. Dear Alex, I'm writing again about the capital altitude question. It's been a while, not because I've given up, but because I've been working three jobs and because researching the question is like having yet another job. And I've hesitated out of reluctance to be told once again that you won't treat me with the same fairness you've extended to other contestants. They're not admitting it. It's a bad question. The odds that what Millionaire is claiming, that it was accidental that some questions were phrased, what is the, and other questions were phrased, which of these is, the odds that all that is accidental is one in about 10 to the 85th. Which is not so far away from a Google. equal to the probability of tossing a coin and having it come up heads about 280 consecutive times. So how do you explain this phenomenon? They made a mistake. It's not accidental how their questions were phrased. With a certainty down to one part in 10 to the 85th. Obviously, I'm persistent. I have some highly developed research and persistence skills, unmatched by anybody. And it makes me sad that I have the emotional flaw that made me persist at this when a more reasonable person would have given up, chalked it up to experience, and moved on. It's just kind of weird that of all the people to get a question that would take hundreds of hours of research to demonstrate its wrongness, that I would be the one to get it. Do you feel unlucky? I don't like thinking about luck. I like to think of myself as a science guy, but there's one thing with regard to luck that makes me nervous. I see many more pennies lying face down than I do face up. Beyond what you'd expect from statistical variation. There's just something weird that I can't explain. Dear Mr. Rosner, as I explained to you in my August 11th letter, we believe that the answer to your $16,000 question is correct and that, therefore, a return trip to the show is not warranted in your case. Sincerely, Alexandra W. Cantalupo.
final answer? Final answer.